All right, hey everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to The King's Speech. Uh, so I just finished recording my Vinland Saga uh, read-through and review. Uh, so I'm just about to dive into uh, my second video of the day. So we're about to dive into Ascender in just a couple of seconds here. Uh, so like I mentioned in my Vinland Saga video, uh, no big intro before the videos for these ones. Uh, all the news and updates are on the channel update, which I've released before both of these videos have dropped. Uh, so anyone looking for information on what's going on, please look at that video uh, to kind of acquaint yourself. And uh, without further ado, let us dive into Ascender Volume 1. I know everyone's excited for this. Just give me a second here. So let's dive into it. <coughs> Excuse me. With Ascender Volume 1, uh, The Haunted Galaxy by Jeff Lemire and Destin, Dustin Yuan as we pick up on Nosos. Uh, let me see if I can make this full screen somehow. No, I cannot. Does not matter. Uh, formerly the smallest core planet of the United Galactic Council. You can see it now as you see a flash of purple light and a flash and a scree as this worm looking worm dragon thing comes screeching in to the atmosphere, comes landing in with a scree on a platform. What the hell? Looks like someone is walking out of it. Off this congregation of people that are waiting. It's like, oh, mother, we were not expecting you. The one says, what Thobin means to say is that it's good to see, to see you, mother. And the person referring to his mother goes, have my ship fed. It's been a long flight. And you have, you heard our babs, feed the ship. As you see these two red-handed looking hickey characters accompanying Mother. She's walking away and they go, yes, Master Frobin. And you see, as you can see, Mother, the, star, uh, the starship fields are flourishing. You were right, of course. The Nosians make wonderful slaves. And you see, a fresh crop of ships should be ready for harvest by the next moon. And you see a bunch of Nosians working together to, I assume, create some kind of weird animal-looking ships. As they're walking through, like almost like a rock quarry, except there's like these dragon ship things on each side. And you have Mother going, excellent. And the offensive on Narada, General Vix, any progress there? And uh, one of the vampires goes, it went well, Mother. We snuffed out the black market there and confiscated and destroyed a large number of spacecraft, weapons, and forbidden tech. And you see Mother finally kind of taking her robe off and you have this old lady with these shockingly emerald eyes and grayish hair. And she goes, and what about the attacks on our bases on the moons of Amun, General? What of that? And uh, Vix goes, the UGC rebels hit us hard, but we took a prisoner. And Mother's like, a prisoner? I will see this prisoner now. And as they head downstairs into what I assume are the uh, cells or prisons, they think it's Vix going, it's all under control, Mother. It's only a matter of time until he talks to us. No, it's not Vix, that's the two uh, lackeys that are following her. One go, the mother goes, you bumbling idiots have no idea what you're doing. I will see the prisoner. And one of them goes, but, but, but we have everything under control, Mommy, I swear. And you have one of the brothers going, shut up, Froben, you've got nowhere with the prisoner, nowhere. And Froben goes, oh, and what have you managed to do, great wizard Thobin? And you see, quiet, both of you. His mother just lifts her hand and starts levitating Froben and Thobin. And uh, Froben goes, mother, please. And she goes, no, the coven warned me against trusting you two with such an important mission, but I was blinded by a mother's love. No more. Go back to ordering out slaves and growing spacecraft. That's all you two are good for. And they drop the uh onto the floor. She walks away. And she comes into this very medieval looking stone cavern area where you have a UGC soldier laid out on a stone slab, just torches ringing the circumference, circumference of the chamber. And Mother goes, how long ago did you take this prisoner? And Vix goes, two days. Other UGC rebels escaped again. Uh, yeah, two days. The other UGC rebels escaped again, of course. But they left his body behind. Mother goes, fools. 
They thought death could silence him, but death is our ally, not theirs. And you have uh, Froben going, Mother, I tried all the necromantic spells in the old text. I'm afraid we're just too late. And she goes, too late? Perhaps for you, fools, but not for me. Watch, boys. I will show you true magic. <laughs> and she starts chanting something and she passes a hand over his mouth. And she exhales some kind of gray steam into the dead UGC soldier's mouth. And you know, as he starts to come back to life. And you see his pale eyes as he goes, cold, dark. Mother goes, do not be scared. Mother is here. Tell me, what was your name? And he goes, Second Lieutenant Rymus Tell, 4th Battalion, United Galactic Council, Samson. And Mother goes, the UGC is dead, long gone. You remember that, yes? And he goes, yes, long gone, no more UGC, just you, just Mother. And she goes, but it is not, but it is not just me. me. There is another, isn't there? Someone is helping you with what's left of you UGC rebels. And he goes, yes, another helping, protecting, protecting us with great magic. And Mother goes, there's no magic in this galaxy that I do not oversee. No power I do not control. I am Mother and the universe is mine. Now tell me, who is protecting the rebels? And the course goes, we do not know his name. Mother kind of arcs her fingers as Mother just kind of does a... Yeah, like a grabbing motion with her hand and the corpse just kind of arcs his back off the table and she goes liar do not think that death makes you immune to pain i will torture you for eternity if i must tell me who he is and the corpse is solid for a second before goes we do not know his name only his light mother's like who is he who's the one protecting you tell me and she keeps twisting her fingers as the corpse just keeps arching and arching with a gah! He's like, who is he? And it goes, he is the light in the darkness. He is the great wizard. He is hope. And you see a floosh. As the corpse just lets on like a ray of light. He's like, what? And Frobo's like, mother. It's like, mother, did you? And she goes, no. And you see that the corpse has disappeared. <laughs> You see just a robotic head left in his place as they go, something there, what is it? And Mother picks it up and goes, it is a message. As we go back to Samson, formerly the largest planet in the United Galactic Council and home to its military center and largest human cities, now it is a devastated world thrown back into the pre-technological age and cut off from the rest of the galaxy. And you see just this giant turtle floating through the space through the sky as uh, Millie's just flew on the mountainside next to a bunch of trees watching it. And you have back in the city uh, someone like these two flying insect guys in this bazaar going, Mother is great. Mother loves you. Mother is always watching. And you see uh, Millie going into there to see someone going, Hello Trilly. And she, uh, you see this uh, amphibious looking woman with this bob cut of green hair uh, with a basket of what looks like mangoes and she goes, what do you want now, girly? She's like, what do you think I want? I want to trade. And he's like, hmm, I'm done trading good fruit to you for mountain rats. I'm a kind man, girly, but that only goes so far. And he's like, ain't mountain rat this time. True, truly, frocks fur. He's like, frogs? How'd you trap a fox? A frox? And she's like, I trap all kinds of things out there, Trilly. Frogs ain't that tough. Trilly's like, hmm, well, I can't trade these easily. Select market for these frogs these days. I can only give you two pieces of fruit. And she's like, two? Forget it. I have a bunch of soldiers coming up and going, hey, what do we have here? Looks like mountains come to me. You're trading illegally again, Trilly. And Trilly's like, no, no sir, I, I told her. I says, Trilly don't take black market deals. Trilly only trades with licensed vendors. And you have, so you got a licensed girl? And he's like, yes. He's like, you lying to us? He's like, no sir. And you see them grabbing her arm and they look just like, maybe assume what's a wand over it. 
and you see a little tattoo showing up on her wrist. As they go, let me see your mark then. And one of them goes, ha, you ain't free, you ain't saved, and you ain't even licensed to be down in the village, kid. And she whips her arms away and goes, so? Everyone comes down here, what do you care? And one of the soldiers just lifts her up by the throat and he goes, what did you say? Is that how you talk to the saved? And he's kind of struggling against it, but no, sir. And you have a uh, soldier going, what was that? And Mila goes, no, officer, praise mother, mother, save us all. And he drops her back down and goes, you're lucky it was us who found you, kid. Anyone else in the militia would have turned you over to the camps. But we ain't heartless. Mother is compassionate. So you give us the frog's fur and get on back up the mountain, and we'll let it go. But we see you trying to trade down here again, and you'll be vamp food, you hear? And so Mila just hands it over and goes, thank you, officer. Praise mother. And you see as she's walking away, you see the two flying, goblin-looking things going, Mother is great. Mother loves you. Mother is always watching. And you see Mila heading back up the mountain to the hut. As she pops her head and goes, oh, hi, Dad. And he's silent for a second before he goes, where have you been, Mila? And she goes, I said, nowhere. I was just playing. And Andy goes, playing all afternoon? And she's like, sorry, I didn't mean to. And then he grabs her wrist as he sees the tattoo mark and goes, what the hell is this? Your rune is showing you. Tell me what happened right now. And Mila goes, I, I went down to Swap Town and the militia stopped me, but I'm fine, Dad. And Andy's like, fine? Mila, what were you thinking? And she goes, I was thinking that I'm bored out of my mind up here, and if you just agree to let me become saved, I could go down to Swap Town and to school and anywhere else I wanted without having to worry about being thrown in a vamp camp. And he's silent for a second before he goes, you don't know what you're saying. Mila goes, I do too. Who cares if I believe in Mother or not? At least we wouldn't have to live up here like hermits anymore. And Andy goes, I will never, never submit to that, that monster. You hear me? We are free, and as long as I have anything to say about it, we'll stay free. And Mila's like, free? Look where being free got us. Look where it got mom. And Andy goes, if she were still alive to hear you talk like that, more than anyone I ever knew, your mom hated that woman and everything she stood for. And she, and he just kind of reminisces about Effie as he goes, she gave her life so you could grow up free. And Mila just gets up angrily. She goes, is that what you think we are up here? Free? I've never even left this ward. I've never seen the oceans or the old cities. Nothing. And Andy's like, Mila, sit down and eat. And she just walks away and goes, I'm not hungry. And Andy's like, Mila, Mila. And she walks out of the house. And you see on Mata, one of Mother's weird <laughs> dragon flying ships comes uh, through the warp space onto this floating, very spiky looking tower. And you have formerly an aquatic world free of sentient life and secret home to a hidden underwater robot colony. Now home to Mother's floating stronghold and sanctum to her coven. And you see General Vix fetch the knife. It's like, yes, Mother. And you see, here you go, Mother. And you see Mother coming up on like this stone tablet area and she takes the knife and just slices her hand and drips some of her blood onto it. And you see a sha as these orbs light up red. And you see daughter, 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 as you see. <laughs> oh man, you see four of them saying daughter and one of them going, what do you want, bitch? And you have mothers, I summon you. I request your counsel, mothers. And you see one of them going, why should we help you? It's like, oh, be quiet. Your bitterness grows tiresome. We are a lineage. She is our ancestor. One day she will die and join the coven too. It is the way of things. It goes, easy for you all to say. You've been dead for ages. Only years ago I was still flesh and blood. I was alive. Should have been me who rose up. Me who ruled the universe, not this whelp. And a mother goes, you are too weak, mother. That is why I killed you in your sleep. Now, your magic and your wisdom belong to me. And you have, I assume, her grandmother going, ignore her daughter. Our wisdom is yours. What troubles you? And mother goes, a mage has risen. He is allied with my enemies, yet no matter what spell I cast, I cannot detect or locate his magic anywhere. 
He is hidden from me in every way. How is this possible? And one of them goes, We sense no mage. And her mother goes, Your magic is our magic, and it is still the greatest in the galaxy. And mother then holds up the robot head that she was sent and goes, But this, this was a message from the unknown mage. What does this mean? And one goes, The robots are gone. They are no concern. You've stomped out all technology in the galaxy except that which you strictly control. This is no message. It is a distraction, a ruse. This mage toys with you. You are in control now, daughter. There is nothing to fear. And you have her mother going, Hmm, I would not be so sure about that. And mother goes, What do you mean, mother? And she goes, As the last to join the coven, my connection to the material world is the strongest. And I... I have seen something in the darkness. He's like, what? What have you seen? Tell me. And she goes, a hound. I have seen a hound. Beware the hound with a backwards tongue. And you see, beware the hound, as they all just kind of go back into the orbs and they turn black again. And you have Vix going, what does it mean, mother? And she goes, I do not know yet, Vix, but I will. We are going to talk, we are going to niche. I will speak with the king. Vix goes, of course, mother. As he kind of kneels next to her head, as she offers it up to him, as he starts lapping up the blood. And she goes, and she goes, the hound with the backwards tongue. And we go back to Samson, uh, where Mila's kind of just sitting with her legs curled up uh, on a mountaintop, just looking over at the kind of scenery below her. And she has, there has to be more than this. There just has to be. Why couldn't I have been born when we still had shi uh, spaceships and ship drives? And you see a thoom. There's an explosion in the sky. And she goes, why couldn't I have been before the harvesters took it all away and before mother was born? And you see a whoosh. As a comet or something strikes down right behind her. And it goes, what would it have been like to be alive when robots walked among us? My dad won't ever talk about what things were really like back then, and I have no one else to ask. So every night I look to the stars and I ask myself these things over and over again. I never thought I would actually get an answer. And you see her just kind of rushing into the forest to see what the fell down there. <laughs> oh boy, and you see I was wrong. As you see that the meteor that's crash landed is banded back again with a fro fro and Mila is just looking at him in shock and surprise as we get to chapter two and you have Samson's like shh be quiet and he's banded going fra 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 and uh, Mila goes and picks him up and goes someone will hear you you need to stop and you hear Mila and she's like oh no that's my dad you gotta hide He's like, Mila? He's like, no, don't! And you see Bandit just running off towards Andy. And she's like, I'm in so much trouble, I'm in so much trouble, and so much. And she sees it, oh. She sees Andy just on his knees, cradling Bandit to him as he's cogging him. And she's like, Dad? And Andy's like, my dog, Mila. You found my dog! We have Bandit went, fra, fra! As we have the planet Nish, home of the only monarchy in the galaxy, Formerly home to the melting pits and the robot hunting scrappers. And you see, attention, attention. Welcome to Nish, Miss Master of Sorcerers, Queen of the Arcane, Ruler of the Galaxy, and Mother of All. And Mother's like, oh, be quiet. Where is the king? And he goes, uh, well, <laughs> you see, His Majesty's not feeling particularly well today, Mother. He asked that I, as his consort, receive you. And you see, Mother kind of just doing the forced choke as she lifts him up and goes, I will see the king now. And he's like, yes, mother. I see a choom, choom. And you see this slobby, bratty looking king that doesn't look like he's out of his teens yet. Playing with some kind of rotating uh, globe. As someone comes and goes, oh, my lord, we have um, yes. And he goes, I told you I'm too busy to. And you have Mother going, shut up, boy. And he gets off his old throne and goes, you can't just barge into my throne room. I'm Stock, son of Slock. There's protocol. And Mother goes, what you are, boy, is a sniveling little whelp who's lucky to be alive. 
The only reason I let you keep on playing king and the only reason I haven't raised this entire world is because Nish has the infrastructure I need to collect and destroy what tech is still left out there. Do you understand? You are king of the garbage bin, garbage bin boy, nothing more. And she goes, but now I'm afraid you're outliving your usefulness. And Stark goes, but, but mother, this month alone we've collected and scrapped nearly 300 spacecraft in the melting pits. Then she goes, and what are the rebels? Those former UGC grunts keep coming. They keep finding weapons and shift drives. Why haven't you found their supply line yet? And he goes, I have my best scrappers hunting for them. It's only a matter of time. And mother goes, time? You are out of time, child. I know now I cannot trust you. I let you have your sover sovereignty, but I should have been more closely involved in your operations. And she goes, General Vix. And he hands her a little jar with this red liquid and something floating in there. As he goes, here you are, mother. Oh, what the hell? Ugh. She goes, yes, I think it's time I kept a much closer eye on you here, King Stock. And she pulls out this little squid-looking thing, and Stock's just looking at me like, what is that? She goes, this? This will be my eyes on you, on Nish. My eyes on you. And Mother just reaches into her eye socket, pulls her eye out, and sticks it into the mouth of the squid. And you see starting to like mutate and grow. As she goes, we will stay with you, King Stock. Everywhere you go, everything you do, we will be with you always watching and I see what it sees and you see the squids kind of grown into like this bigger giant form with just eyes popping up everywhere and stalks like this this is an outrage and mother goes playtime is over boy find the rebels shut them down or Nish follows the rest of the UGC into ruin mother will be watching you see back on Samson Excuse me. Oh, it's getting dry. Mila goes, wait, who is Tim 21? And you see that Andy's got Ben on the table. He's giving him a nice little bath in the scrub. And he goes, I told you, Mila, Tim 21 was a companion robot that lived with me when I was about your age. This was back before the fall when we were in the mining colony on Derishu. And Mila's just like in rapture. She's like, and Ben, it was your pet? Can't believe you never told me you had a pet. A robot pet and a robot brother, and you won't even let me have a frox. And Andy's like, it was a different time, Mila. Everyone had robots before the harvesters. And Mila's like, I know that. I mean, everyone knows that. But hearing stories about it and actually seeing one is, it's like, wow, a real life robot, amazing. And she's just petting Bandit with a fra fra. And as she does, you see Cousin Kist, and Bandit just shoots out this hologram. It's like, what did you? He's like, nothing. I didn't do anything, Dad. And you see him going, star chart. But this, this isn't our galaxy. And you see a grit and a fra as Andy notes something outside. And he's like, Dad, what was that? And he goes, I don't know. Stay still. And you hear he goes, and be quiet, bandit. You have mother sees you. Mother is everywhere. And he's like, shit, they're here. They know. And you see the two little goblin flying things outside the house going, Mother will save you. Mother loves you. And Mila's like, Daddy? He's like, get back, Mila, as he goes out and peers out the window. And he goes, oh no. And you see this vampire squad dressed in like ornate armor with one having like a red cloak coming up on the house. And the leader goes, flank the cabin. Look for a back entrance. I don't want them to escape. And one of them goes, yes, Captain. So Andy kneels down next to Mila and goes, Mila, listen to me. Get under the bed. No matter what happens, stay there. Do not come out. Do you understand me? And Mila's like, it's, it's a vamp, isn't it? He's like, I'm sorry, Daddy. I didn't mean to. And he goes, you didn't do anything wrong, Mila. This is not your fault. Bandit came for me. He gives her a hug and goes, now go get her the bed and stay there. And he's like, Dad, what are you? And you see uh, Andy kind of just pulling out an axe. And he goes, just go. Get down. And you see him pulling off this rug and just hacking into this wooden floorboard. And you have the guards outside going, we know you have forbidden tech in there. 
Our enchantments alerted us. Alerted us. There's no point in hiding. Come out and be spared. You have mother beckons you. <laughs> Goes, mother will save you, and Andy just reaches into the cell and goes, yeah, yeah, as he pulls out a gun, and he goes, I got your salvation right here, as he charges it up. <laughs> and you see a choom, as he fires through one of the guards, and you have, you two, go for enforcements, hurry! And you see the two goblin ones flying off, as they go, fire, they have fire! And you see another choom, and it's, as the vamp goes down. And you have Andy go, get away from my home. You see another choom. As you have Mila just kind of cowering under the bed, just covering her ears. And Ben is still barking with a fra, fra. And ah, and a choom. And you see the vampire just leaping onto the roof with a whoop. And he's like, shit. And he starts firing into the roof as the vampire lands in, breaks through the roof and lands inside. The fra, fra. Like, what have we here? As he's doing that, and he just shoots him right through the soul, through the shoulder, and he goes, "Mother forbids weapon like weapons like these. Mother forbids the robot you have harbored. These are offenses punishable by death. Excuse me, but death is too good for you, Mountain Rat." The vampire just grabs him as he hoists him up, and he goes, "Instead, you will be my food, my personal feeder." And then he's looking in surprise. <laughs> Oh, I love it. And you see that Mila's come up behind him with a sharpened stick and just stabbed him right through the heart from behind as he drops Andy. And she's like, Daddy, are, are you okay? He gives her a hug as he goes, I'm okay, Mila. You, you did good. He goes, hurry, grab some clothes. Only what you can carry. No more. And he's like, Dad, what are... And he goes, there'll be more. We have to go. We can't stay here, Mila. And she's like, Dad, I, where will we go? And he goes, Samson isn't safe. Not now. We have to leave. We have to get off world. And he's like, Off world? But, Dad, we can't get off world. There are more, no ships in. And Handy goes, There are ships, Mila, in the Badlands. Illegal ships. It won't be easy, but if we can make it to the ports, <sighs> I think I know someone who may be able to help us. And we see in a ship, a sh now with hair torn short, Telsa. Kind of just, you know, leg up, sitting on a bench. Oh, it's so good to see her again. <laughs> we get to chapter three and we have a flashback to ten years ago. As we see uh, the harvesters arriving, Andy and Effie reacting to it. Effie going, Andy! And he goes, the UGC, the entire fleet, it's gone. He's like, Andy, get us out of here. And he's like, I can't leave Tim. And she goes, it's too late for that, don't you see? They have him now. It's over. It's all over. We have to get out of here. We have to jump. You jump? Jump where? She goes, anywhere, Andy. Just get us out of here. And you see a Shrek as the ship comes out of ship space. And Effie's like, where? And he goes, Jerishu 6, where I grew up. It's the guy I bought his home. And you see them out in their spaces as they're exploring the atmosphere. And Andy's like, F, you okay? She goes, no. He's like, Effie? And she goes, no, I don't. There's nothing left, Andy. The between, the UGC, and I don't know what we're going to do. And he goes, we're still here, Eff. We can lay low and then find somewhere to. And she goes, you don't understand. It's not just us and Andy. Not anymore. Oh. And you see Samson now as uh, Mila goes, but how will we get down the mountain? The flying guard went for reinforcements. They'll be back watching all the trails down. And Andy goes, not all the trails, Mila. I know a few. Now hurry. And you have him putting Bandit's back. But Bandit's just going, fra, fra. And Andy takes him out and goes, quiet, Bandit. There's no way we can let you run free. You're going to be a magnet for all their, for their anti-tech charms as is. And you see Mila looking back at the house as she goes, Dad, will, will we be back? I mean, we aren't going forever, are we? And Andy goes, we can never come back here. You know that. We need to get off planet Mita. Oh, Mila, sorry, not Mita. Brain's dying on me. And Mila goes, but how are we going to get past the militia camp? And he goes, I don't know yet, but I'll think of something. And to think of something, that's your plan? And he goes, do you have a better one? 
We could turn bandit and pray that the militia has mercy on us. Or we could become safe. Is that it? Become disciples of mother? Is that what you want? And she kind of looks defeated and looks down and goes, no. And he kind of just kneels next to her and puts a hand on her and goes, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I didn't mean to yell. I know you're scared, but you have to know I would never let them hurt you. We'll be okay. I promise you. And you see Ben just popping his head with a fra fra. And he's like, what is your problem? And he was like, Dad, do you feel that? A rumble. And he's like, something's coming. And you see a fra fra. As you see, you heard of Froxes just running by. It's like, Froxes! And she's like, but what are they running from? And then he gets out the gun and he goes, Mila. And she's like, Daddy? And you see a thoom, thoom, thoom. He's like, oh, scrap. It's like a thoom. And you see this giant, ugly looking, wrinkled, I assume it's some kind of troll with just like this green green shrub like popping out of parts of it. Just coming out of the undergrowth. And you see a fra fra's band is just screaming. You see a giant thoom. And he's like, Daddy! He's like, Fra's like, run, Mila, run! And you see seven years ago, still under a shoe. And he's outside and he comes back in as he's taking off his suit. He goes, Hello? He's like, I'm back. And you're wearing here. And you see, hey. He's like, hey. And you look out there and you see a little baby Mila playing with Effie and some blocks. And Andy goes, two mine rats. They're getting scarcer. We're going to have to start rationing the old colonist stocks even more than we are. And you have Effie going, what about taking another shift jump to Narada for supplies? Mila and I would be okay here for a day or two. And you have Andy kind of sitting down as he flushed playing with Mila and he goes, I don't think that's a good idea, F. I went and booted up the old comms array again. We've lost contact with Durushu 4 now, and there's still, still no signal from the outer rim planetoids. And it's like, what do you think's happening? And he goes, I don't know, but every time I use the comms, there are fewer and fewer contacts out there, and the last UGC report we got was over a year ago. And F, he's like, I don't know, Andy. Maybe you should take a run anyway. It's been too quiet. I'm starting to worry. And he goes, well, don't. The worst thing that can happen out there already has. And here we are. Let the universe burn. It doesn't matter. We got this monkey. What else do we need, huh? And you see, six years ago, like, here it comes. <laughs> and you see a little baby, uh, toddler, not toddler. I say a kid, kid Mila. As Andy's kind of throwing a ball towards her and she's playing outside with her parents. And she's like, my ball! And he's like, yep, your ball, Mila. Want to throw it back? And she tosses it back. He's like, catch, Daddy! He's like, oh, nice toss! And you see Effie watching the play and then she looks off to the side. And Andy's like, Effie, you okay? She's like, I don't know. And Mila's like, Mommy, okay? And he's like, I'm okay, baby. And she picks her up as Andy's like, what is it? And Effie's like, I don't know. My senses sort of blipped on something up there for a minute. And you see F or Mila pointing up going, Dragon! And Andy goes, what? A ship? There hasn't been another ship on radar for mo for months, Zeph. And he's like, I don't know. It was weird. And you see Mila still pointing up excitedly going, Mommy! Daddy! Dragon! And Andy's like, there's no such things as dragons, Mila. And then you see them all staring up in shock as they go, what the... And you see Mother's Dragons as three of them just enter in the atmosphere out of space with a scream. And Andy's like, what? What are they? And Effie's like, the mines, Andy. We need to get to the mines. And you see back in the present again as Andy's like, run! And she's like, daddy! He's like, we, he's like, we'll run right into the militia. They're forcing us down to them. And he gives her bandit as he goes, Mila, the old trap line, the one we set up last summer, can you find it from here? And he's like, yes, but... He goes, but nothing. Listen to me. You take Bandit. He's a good boy. He'll help you. You get to that old trap line and follow it down to follow it down past the villages. Head to the shore, the ports. And she goes, no, not without you. He goes, listen, I will meet you at the ports when you get there. You need to find a woman called Telsa. Can you remember that? Telsa, say it. And she goes, Telsa, I need to find Telsa. She says, thum, thum, as that thing's just getting closer and closer. And he takes the gun and he goes, that's my girl. Now go. We go back to Durishu again. As you have Andy going, F, I think we need to go. He's like, wait, what are they? And you see as, as the dragon lands and like its neck area separates and someone's coming out. And he's like, F, and he's like, I see them. 
and you see them sliding down the hill as they make a run for the mines. You have, stop, mother commands it. Stop and be saved. And then he's like, go, the ship, get to the ship. You see a hiss as a vampire leaps onto Effie and pulls her back. He's like, ugh, it's like, mommy. He's like, Eff. And you see you're just getting overwhelmed by vampires are starting to fight back. And you have, get off. And as Andy grabs Mila and he's like, Effie. He's like, go, Andy, go. As vampires start pulling her helmet off. He pulls out a pistol and starts shooting with a choom choom. He's like, get off of her. Oh. And you see one of the vampires gets sit, shot in the shoulders and goes, hey, <laughs> Mother does not like bad boys that use toys. And you see, he says one of the vampires grabs Effie, cranes her neck, and takes a bite. And Annie screams, Effie! Oh. And you see her going, Andy, and she kind of clasps her hand to her neck, and you start seeing her slowly starting to transform. As Andy's like, F? And you see her eyes starting to go red, and her mouth starting to sprout fake. She goes, Go! Take Mila! Go! And you see Andy running away as he goes, don't look, Mila, close your eyes, don't look. And you see as he jumps onto the ship. And as the doors are closing and it starts taking off, you see him looking down as he sees that after she's turned into a vampire, she's trying to claw to the ship and jump on. And you see, Mommy! As he slams the hatch closed and they take off. <sighs> Boy, did not expect that at all. You have a now on the present a choom choom. As Andy's firing again, the thing's just kind of reaching a hand down for him. He keeps firing. And you see a daddy as he's leaping back as the arm comes down. And he's like, I told you to go. And Mila's like, I'm not leaving you, daddy. And you see Bandit going, fra, fra. He's like, Bandit, no, come back. He's like, Bandit, get out of there. And you see Eep, danger detected. Activate guard dog mode. <laughs> And you see Bandit's casing starting to come off. And you see like this hexagonal bits and pieces coming out. And you see a kazak As he just blows whatever the hell that was to bits. With a fra. And Mila's like whoa. As we get to chapter 4. And you see back on Mata. You see a mother asleep in this huge canopy bed. Of very goth looking. As you hear, please, he's like, please. You hear, be quiet. He's like, please, let me out. And you see that she's got this little child, like, trapped in this little closet area. And she goes, never, never again. As she closes the door. And you have a knock knock. He's like, mother. It's like, what is it? Do like, you have visitors? It is the twins. They, they say it is urgent. And she goes, very well, Vix, one moment. And you see, is it Froben and Thoben? And uh, once they Froben goes, Mother, we're very sorry to come announce like this, but we have news. And she goes, One of you morons better start explaining. And you see a Sha as the other, the coven activates, and you see the red glowing coming up. And you're explain, explain, explain. And Mother's mother goes, Yes, you better explain. You interrupt this little bitch. She was busy with her secrets. And mother goes, careful mothers, I am flesh. You are not. Your tongue can be silenced forever should I choose it to be so. And she goes, Thobin, Froben, speak, or your tongues will be on my floor. And uh, Froben goes, well, we have, uh, have come terms for Amamon. As you have known, we've been establishing a new base and staging ground there. The former UTC rebels have been very active in that area lately, making several raids on Amun. The mother goes, you have said nothing that I don't already know full well, Thobin. There had better be a point. Thobin goes, there is, mother, we swear. And uh, Froben goes, you see, see, we set a trap for the mother. And if the trap worked, we have captured the verbal leader. You see, back on Samson is uh, Andy's looking at the crater where that, I want to call it, scholar troll go was. And he goes, bandit? And you see, chuck and a fra. I see the blue light inside of him. And he's like, did you know he could do that? And he's like, no. Makes me wonder what else he can do. Where did you come from, bandit? And he goes, the fra, fra. And you see a scree and a dad. And you see the dragon ships coming down, starting to breathe down fire on them. It's like, militia, go, go. And as they're running away, Mila's like, can't bandit get them? 
And then he's like, I think Ben is as scared of them as we are. And we look, don't look back, Squeeze. Just keep on going. Run. He's like, run where, Dad? I see him coming to the edge of the cliff and jumping off as the dragons hit them with a fire blast from behind with a whoosh. And you see them just standing on this cliff face. He goes, hold on. He's like, Dad, they're coming back. He's like, Dad. He grabs her hand and goes, jump. She's like, what? He goes, you have to trust me, sweetheart. Jump. And they leap off the cliff as a fire blast comes in and explodes the area where they're standing on. And as they're tumbling down, and he kind of grabs her as he falls to the, uh, down below. <laughs> He's like, you okay? He's like, okay. And you see that they've landed on one of the giant flying turtles as it came below them and they're taken off. And you have Mila going, will they follow? And Andy goes, not until they get back up. There are only three of them. They know better. And, uh, and Mila's like, but where are these things flying to, Dad? Where are we going? And he goes, right where we need to go, Mila. Where turtles always go. The sea. And you see a scream as one of mother ships comes flying into Tramuin, the smallest moon of the planet Amun. And you have, praise mother, save us all. He's like, at ease, where is he? It's like right in here, General. And you see these two ogre-looking characters standing over a UGC soldier. Who goes, Mother? He goes, Well, well. And you have Farwin going, well, We deployed se several supply convoys because the, the Amun Starway and let a c c cloaking encryption slip out into the, the outer colonies. And Tholwin's like, We knew the bait would be too good for the resistance to pass up, Mother. And you have, Ch I expected so much more from you, Colonel. Colonel Millis? Yes, I know who you are. Colonel Jess Millis of Narada. I know who you are because I tortured your family last year. That is how I learned you were the current leader. And you have Millis going, yes, and I don't know exactly who you are too, Mother. I knew that your hubris would be too great to not come here and interrogate me yourself. And he said, what are you? And he goes, didn't you and your moron sons think it odd that the resistance would send its leader take a simple supply convoy and he goes you thought you had set a trap but this this is the real trap and I am the bait and you have Vix going he's bluffing we scanned him he's clean mother and you see Mills' eyes are starting to glow blue as he goes <laughs> you scan for technology but haven't you heard we have our own sorcerer now we have our own magic and you see a blue glow just exploding out as Vix is like, Mother! You have no! And you see Jack Kathum as an explosion in the cave where they're holding a prisoner. And then we go back to Samson where the sea turtles are kind of flying just right over uh, the port area. And he goes, we're at the ports. So we may not get much lower. We're going to have to jump. And Mila's like, we're going to have to jump again, aren't we? He goes, yes, as soon as we get over the water. So he kind of grabs her in his arms and goes, remember to hold your breath. It's like, you too, bandit. He's like, you ready? And he's like, no. He's like, me either. He's like, here we go. And he leaps off and he dives into the sea. And you see them kind of floating down. And Mila kind of grabs Bandit and floats back to the surface. And she goes, Dad? Daddy? And you see Andy also just breaking out of the, breaking the, <sighs> breaking up out of the ocean as he goes, <gasps> and she's like, Dad? He's like, you okay? He's like, I'm okay. And you see them swimming up to the port. And it's like, Brandon's still going, fra fra fra, And then Mila's like, quiet, get in, bandit. And Angie's like, hurry, Mila, the militia will be here soon. So which one is it again? And you see them walking across the docks looking for a ship. And he goes, this one, the starfish, this is it. And Mila's like, I thought you said we were going to find a ship, Dad. I mean, real starship, not this piece of garbage. And Andy goes, better be careful, Mila. If the captain of the ship hears you talking like that, she'll throw you overboard. She was a, excuse me, there's some hiccups here. She was a great pilot and a great soldier. You don't want to mess with her, kid, trust me. And Mila's like, really, uh, is that her? Oh boy, and you see, uh, poor Telsa just kind of left one arm draped over a barrel, cradling a bottle, displayed out completely drunk. And Andy's just like, oh, oh boy. So we have chapter five. And on Samson, and you see him just slapping Telsa, trying to get her to wake up. He goes, Telsa, wake up, goddammit. And he's like, Dad, don't hit her. 
And he's like, wake up. He's like, just keep the dog quiet, Mila. And she's like, daddy. He's like, not now. Tell us wake the hell up. And as he continues slapping her, someone grabs his hand and goes, enough. You will not lay a hand on the captain again, human. <laughs> and you have this blue-haired woman with, like, the sides of her head shorn. Looking really beefy and muscular. And she just picks up Andy and hoists him up. And tells us, like, finally waking herself up. And she's like, it's, it's okay, Helda. He's an old friend. Kind of. You know, tells the guy he's groggily getting up. She goes, what are you doing here, Andy? And he goes, we, we need to get away from here, Telsa. And she's like, so? Get away from here. What's it got to do with me? And he goes, we, we need to get off planet. And she's silent for a moment. She goes, can't help you with that. Sorry. She picks up a bottle. And he goes, Bull, we both know that you know there are ships. Real ships. I don't have any money. I can't pay you. But I need help, Telsa. There, there's no one else we can go to. And she kind of just turns and walks away and goes, Sure there is. Lots of pirates this port will take you on. I'm not getting caught up in this. And as she's walking away, Mila goes, Please! My dad killed a vamp and then bandit killed a giant. And now the militia's coming for us. And tells us, like, not my problem. And he's like, wait. Did you just see bandit kill a giant? <laughs> And you see Bandit just popping his head up with a little smiley face like Fra And tells us like holy shit. Because you have Kramun, the smallest moon of Amun. And you see a smoking crater where the magic explosion went off. And you see that Mother's encased Vix herself and Frobin and Thobin in a blue bubble of magic. As Frobin's like, Mother's like you praise saved us, praise mother. And he's like, saved you? You idiots led me right into a rebel trap. He's like, which one? Answer me, which one? And you see these blue tentacles coming around, just grab them as she's hoisting them up in the air. And like, Gaps, what? And she goes, one of you pitiful excuses for sorcerers is going to pay for this incompetence. I'll let you decide which one of you dies. And you have uh, Frobin go, but please, mother, my b b brother, nor I could possibly have known that the rebel leader had a bomb inside of him. Will we scan him for all to detect? And Mother goes, that explosion was not tech, that was magic. Are you telling me you two fools did not think to do a simple divining spell, even though you know the rebels are working with a sorcerer of their own now? And you have Froben go, please have mercy, Mother, please spare us. It's like him, like spare me and kill him. Mother, I will never fail you again. And Thobin's like, what? Oh, sorry, it's Thobin going, I will not get these two confused together. So I think Thobin's the stuttering one, Froben's the other one. And Froben goes, what? Thobin's like, oh, please, we both know you're the weak one, Froben. And you have General Vix, mother. He's like, you dare interrupt me? General Vix, you need to get your men in line. Uh, hold on one sec. And he's like, of course, mother, I'll deal with this. And they go, please, General, this telepath has picked up something from Samson. Mother will want to hear this. And she goes, what is it? Speak, child. And the telepath goes, Samson. He's like, yes, yes, Samson. What about Samson? He's like, hound, the hound. And he has, projects an image of Mila running with Bandit. His mother goes, the hound with the backwards tongue. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm such a dumbass. I did not even realize that he was saying arf backwards. I can really tell where my mind is right now that I did not pick up on something that simple. And as they're heading away, Mother goes, Come, Vix, we're going to Samson. It's like, Yes, Mother. And uh, Froben and Tobin are like, what, what about us? Like, there are no more ships here, just yours, Mother. And she goes, Oh, yes, I'd almost forgotten about you two. You two. It's like, Maybe that's the problem. Two of you. Maybe killing one of you isn't an a the answer. But then I did say only one of you would live, and I do like to keep my promises, dears. Ugh. And she uses her magic, and you see them starting to fuse together. This grotesque body horror. And she goes, maybe together you'll actually add up to one decent wizard. And you hear the telepath going, the hound, the hound! 
Mother's like, yes, dearie, the hound. Let's go see the hound. And you see back on Sam saying with a fra fra as F or Milo lets uh, Bandit out of the rucksack. And Heldo's like, do you want I should throw it overboard, Captain? Tells is just staring at her truck. She goes, no. And she kneels down to play with Bandit and goes, I think he likes you. And tells us like, this is, I can't believe he's here. It's like, Tim, is Tim? And Andy's like, no, just Bandit. We have no idea how he got here or where he's been. And you see Tells are just kind of going and leaning over on the railing and she goes, you're going to get me killed, Andy, you know that? And Andy goes, not if you get us out of here. We can get off world together. And Tells goes, even if I could find us a ship and we get off Samson, then what? And where would we even go? And you see Bandit, oh, once again opening up the star map. As Mila goes, I think he's showing us where. And you see a flash. As you see a bunch of uh, Mother's minions coming towards the boat. And an explosion takes place. Yeah, Mother saves us. Mother loves us. And Andy's like, Militia, we need to go now. And you see Helda, fire, stop the fire. And he's like, I'm already on it, Captain. And she's grabbing a bucket of water to throw on the flames. As Telsa goes, take your kid in that bot and get off my boat now. And Andy goes, we're not getting off this boat. You're either going to have to sail us all out of here or the militia gets us all, Telsa. And she goes and shoves Andy, tries to push him off. She goes, get off. I am not going down for you or that bot. And Andy's like, Telsa, please, she's just a kid. And Telsa goes, don't pull that on me. I'm not falling for that, Andy. Not again. And Andy goes, Telsa, she's my little girl. Me and F. She's, she's all I have left in the universe. I, I can't lose her. Oh, God damn it. And you see a daddy! As you see a spear coming right through Andy's heart as he gets pierced through. And Jeff tells him, Andy! As he falls off the ship. And he's like, Daddy! And you see, tells her just restraining her. As you see, one of the goblin flies going, Mother is always watching. And you have tells her just trying to fight, hold on to Mila, stop her from diving in after her, Andy. And she goes, Hell up, pull up anchor. He's like, Aye, Captain. And Mila's like, No! And you see a gra. That's one. <laughs> Oh, I'm already loving Helda. This is this is good. You see one of the ogres leaping on to the ship with a gra. So Helda goes up behind him with an arm lock. And just grabs him and goes, pick on someone your own size, you arse-faced pig. And goes, tosses him back onto the dock and goes, now get off of my boat. And you see Telsa go, keep him off, Helda. I'm firing the engines. And you see Helda's grabbing one of the flying things, just like smashing it around. And she goes, better make it quick, Captain. And she goes, mother is great. Mother is ack. And Telsa's like, this old boat may not be much, but she's quick. You see a boom. And she fires up the boat and they go off. And Telsa's like, ha. Or uh, Hel Helda's like, ha. Go slam your head on us, Marlin Spike Fangies. And you see, as they're watching away, you see Angie's corpse just kind of floating in the sea. And he's like, daddy, no. And tells her just restrains like easy girl. It's like no, get off of me! And tells her, like stop, stop, goddamn, or I'll throw you over. And uh, Mila stops fighting. He's like we can't go, we can't leave, Daddy. He's like we have to. Like, I, I'm sorry. And you see Bandit kind of coming up for her, making a sad face as he's trying to comfort her. And she goes, Bandit, he's gone. He's really gone. He gives her a hug. And Helda goes, now what are we gonna do, Captain? She goes, the only thing we can, Helda, we find a ship, we get this girl off planet, and we never come back. I think, nope, it's not the end. <sighs> Man, Lamar, you cannot play with me like this. As you see the next page, and he suddenly goes, <gasps> as he pulls himself out of the water. Oh my god, that is one hell of a cliffhanger to end this uh, this volume on one hell of a cliffhanger all right <laughs> oh boy man all right i'll say this about ascender so far like once it stops it just keeps going and going and going like it was non-stop adrenaline rush kind of just reading this and seeing how fast 
while everything is taking off. It's a very fast pace, no moment to slow down. But I guess, like, see how that's kind of intentional and necessary for this to kind of kickstart the plot. So I'm really hoping Volume 2 kind of slows down a little bit more. We get a little bit more time to breathe. But this was a very good kind of primer volume to kind of set up uh, all the new set pieces, introduce all the new characters, give us a kind of a glimpse of what their personalities are like, uh, what their motivations are, and everything else. Uh, with what little we've seen of Mother so far, I absolutely adore her as a villain. She is absolutely ruthless. Uh, she's ruthless, she's powerful, she's conniving. Uh, all it's like that just takes check marks off a lot of my boxes in uh, what I look for in a villain so I can't wait to see uh, kind of more of her more of what she's gonna do I love Mila how it's just like almost is the quintessential kind of you know young I want to say precocious kind of child I don't know if I'm using that word right or not but you know she's very she's very vibrant and full of life and she feels very much you know uh, like a little kid which I really appreciate. So good to see Telsa back again uh, with her wife Helda, who is now again one of my new favorite characters. Uh, can't wait to see more of them. Other than that, I really don't have much more to say. I'm, I'm curious to see the thing again, this is gonna be kind of stuff we'll probably get answers to uh, eventually as we get into the later volumes. But I like how well integrated magic is already uh, into the system and uh, how it's kind of been established so far. Uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see when they get into the history of like how Mother first came to power uh, and everything else. But I will say like magic system feels natural to uh, the story so far. Like it doesn't feel overtly forced or out of place. Uh, so it'll be interesting to kind of see us exploring more of like the history of magic and like how it came to be in the system, who mother was, how you know, who can learn magic and all those kinds of things. So solid, very solid first volume for Ascender. Uh, definitely got off to a way better start than Descender. Uh, I'm super interested and peaked uh, to see where this is going. I uh, can't wait to get into more. Uh, so like I mentioned, I will do my best to get my hands on volume two as soon as I can. Uh, and then once I do that, once I sell a few other things, I will do another channel update video with uh, an estimated date for when the Volume 2 review, our read-through and review stuff will come out. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed my first read-through of Ascender. I, as always, if you like my co videos and content, uh, please you know, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, this is Ash. I will talk to you all later.